Hi guys and welcome. You're joining me today to take up a lined curtain. I've already done one, so it's a pair that I've had a lady brought me to take them up for her. I'm going to be using three machines to do this job. I'm going to be using my Duke, my overlocker, call it a surgery in the States and other countries, but it's the same machine, and my blind end machine. Now, a lot of people won't have a blind end machine, and if you've got a fancy machine that's got fancy stitches on, there's a good chance you've got a blind M stitch on your machine. I will upload a link at the end of this video because I did do a video on how to get your blind M look and you're going to get the same result as what I get on my blind Emma with that stitch if you've got it on your machine. Now, the lady wants these to be 87 and a half inch long because she did pin one. Now, what I'm going to work on is a four inch hem. So on the main curtain, I'm going to allow four inch extra, so that's going to be 91 and a half inch. So that's giving me my four inch that I need to do the turnover. And on the lining, I'm going to allow three inch because you don't need a deep hem on the lining of the curtain. So first of all, on a line curtain, you've got it turned under and there's just two tacks there, which is securing that down in place. So I'm going to get me on picker and just unpick that. I'm going to unpick that about six inch up. So I'm just going to put me on picker through that and then set about on picking it. Yeah, and then I'm going to do the other side the same. Now with a blind hem stitch done on a blind hem machine, you can just pull once you get the right stitch, right point of the stitch, you can just pull that thread undone. And then I just need to unpick the line in. Right, so all the hems are undone on the main fabric and the lining. So I'm going to measure from the top and mark inside the curtain at this 87 and a half inch point. So again, I'm just running this down, making sure that I'm holding these tight together. So where that 60 is there, I'm going to put my nail there. That's 60. And then I want 27 and a half inch, which is my final. So I've got my nail there. And then I'm just going to mark this there, there. Inside the curtain. There. Where this crease is, yeah, where that crease is, you know where the fold is there? That's where I'm going to take the measurement from. Yeah, so from that to there, put that up and then just bring my gauge down to that. Yeah, so this is what I'm going to mark underneath. So from the crease coming up to that is taking it to the 87 and a half mark there so this is where the turn up's going to need to be but while i'm doing that at the same time i'm going to be marking four inch because that four inch is where i'm going to be cutting the fabric so that's my turnover so first of all i need to bring that gauge there mark it at four Mark it at four. Yeah, 
Right, so just to be clear again, the first marker there is the 87 and a half inch, the finish length the curtain wants to be. The second marker is my seam allowance. So that's a four inch seam allowance that I'm going to be turning up. So I'm going to be turning that up to that mark. Right, so let's get this cut off. Now, when you're cutting this, make sure that there's no excess curtain coming this way because it's so easy to cut into fabric. And it would be a real shame if you ruined them by cutting into the centre or any part of the curtain that you shouldn't be cutting into. Right, so I'm using the same gauge, but what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to mark it's from where that, again, from where this original bottom crease of the lining is that I'm taking the measurement from. So I'm going to go to there, put that my gauge there, and then instead of, I'm going to use a white because I don't want the blue coming through, you know, on the white. So I'm going to mark that there at the top, but then I'm going to come down three inch because remember I'm doing a smaller hem on the lining. And I'm going to do this again all the way across. And your lining always wants to be an inch to an inch and a half shorter than your main front fabric. Right, so the lining all being measured and the excess has been cut off, so I'm ready for turning it up. So what I'm going to start by doing is bringing my pins over first of all. So I'm going to start by turning the lining over to where I've marked it to. And I'm just going to put pins in the bottom at this point. Right, so let me just get that so that's turned over. Right, so I'm going to come back to the beginning and at this point I'm just going to be turning over that inch and then bringing the pin at the bottom up and pinning this in place. So I'm going to flip onto this side now and I'm going to do the exact same with the main fabric. So that is that, so I'm going to pull it back and then again I'm going to start by just turning the inch over on these. Make sure that's flat and then pinning. Is this in place? 
Now, uh, if you're not if you're not great with your measurements, then you can use one of these, you know, to get your inch. But like I said, I'm pretty good when it comes to measurements, so I don't really need to be measuring it as I'm going along. I'm going to stitch the lining in place first. And I'm just going to, where the end of the lining is here, I'm going to run it down the centre of this first prong on the foot. I'm going to start off with the back tack, lay this flat. And then once I get to the back, I'm going to help that through. Right, so I'm going to get the main curtain now blind hemmed. Is your blind hem stitch. I'm just popping this short video on guys to show you how the blind hem machine works because on the when I was doing the curtain hem I got the camera in the wrong place so you, all you see most of the time is the back of my head though there are small clips where you can actually see me doing it but I'm just going to put this through so you can actually see how the machine does work so you get a better look at it. you just bring the hook round bring the needle up to this point and then you just pull to the back and snap it off so you can just see there guys how what the blind hem stitch looks like and then that's it on the front of the fabric so you can just see the odd stitch every now and again coming through that's just catching the fabric and if that was in black cotton you wouldn't be able to hardly see those Right, now the next step is just coming to the end of the curtain here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be stitching the lining back onto the main curtain which is the bottom. So I'm lining that up, I'm going to put it underneath. So you've got a line here where it was originally stitched. I'm going to literally just pick up from where I left off there and stitch in the same seam. And when, once I get past where it's joined, do a good back tack. That's one side. Let me get the other. Let me just get rid of all this. Don't all fray this fabric. Just put this down. What I'm going to do on the overlocker now then is where I've just literally stitched that end bit on the duke, I'm just going to overlock back to there on both sides. Now at this point guys all that's left to do is to tack the bottom 
What you need to make sure, first of all, is if these brand new curtains have been packed for months on end, maybe even years, where this originally might have been pressed, and you can see that that is all running through, it's not down the side, but I have had some curtains where you've had it goes wide as two inch, then it comes to one, half, etc, etc. You need to make sure, if you've got that instance, that from the top where that is, your top of your curtain, it needs pressing so that it's the same coming all the way down the curtain. Because if not, when you get to the bottom and then you do this and you turn it, there's a good chance it's going to be twisted. It's not going to hang flat. So you need to make sure that all this down your sides on both sides is running true from top to bottom. So it's all the same and even. And then I'm just going to tuck that under like so I'm going to put a pin in it and then the same with the opposite side that is running the same all the way down from top to bottom so I don't have to worry about that but like I said if you've got a curtain where it's running out just start off at your top and press it down so it's the same all the way to the bottom Right, so they're ready for tacking in place now. Right, so what I'm going to do now then, is I'm going to come where this is coming down, I'm going to put the needle down into the fabric, and I'm literally doing the tiniest couple of stitches. That is giving me the same tack as what was on the original hem. Right, so let me get the other one. And that is your new hem guys where you've got your lining you've got your your hem you can see there like where you can order see the stitching can you because it, that's why it's called a blind hem because you don't really see it right so let's have a bit of a recap then guys now if you haven't got a machine guys that's got like a blind hem stitch on it to get the same professional finish as what i've got don't worry about that you can use just your plain running stitch like I've got on the lining you can use that to make curtains you don't need a blind demo it's just that your blind demo does give you your professional finish now the stitch on your machine if you've got it it'll do like a zig uh, it's like it's like a zigzag and then you'll have one two maybe three stitches and then another zigzag and at the end of that zigzags that is your blind stitch but like I said I will put a link in the end of this video if you've got that stitch but you don't know how to use it again few main pointers is when you know what length you want your curtain work out what seam allowance you want on the bottom what your hem wants to be and add that on to your finish length so if you want a 60 drop and you're working on a four inch hem but a one inch turnover but it's still four inch because one inch is going inside you're cutting them to 64 right so this is no matter what you do always remember your seam allowances now like i said with when you're coming down those sides at the very end before you're going to tack the bottom they have got to be even all the way along because if not your curtain's going to twist and that ain't going to be good and then when you get to the bottom if you haven't got that folded the same as it's going down the side you're going to get a problem with that on how it looks on the front of the curtain so they're just little things to remember so I hope this video has been useful, guys, for you if you've been wanting to know how to shorten a pair of line curtains because you've got two hems to do instead of one. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care for now, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.